to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Two more times from your heart. It's in the cross, in the cross, be my glory. Till my raptured soul rests. For the last time from the depth of your heart everyone together in the cross This is from the depth of our hearts. You do not call the seed of Jacob to seek you in vain. Our hearts are opened and we pray that you will bless, you will build, you will change our lives, oh God. Let it indeed be a service worth our coming this morning. We honor you, we are listeners, we are receivers. We pray that this morning there will be the hearing of faith and the walking of miracles and we vow as always that jesus will continually be glorified in our midst in the name of jesus visit us O god even as you have spoken in the name of jesus we are here for you come and do what you do we are here Set our hearts So you do We need a move We need a move Turn that song into a prayer. Just sing one time and we're seated. We are here for you with our burdens, with our troubles, with our desires, with our expectations. For everyone that cometh unto God must believe that He is, even the rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. So you do what you do. We need a more. God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated again. Amen. Yesterday night we began discussing on matters of efficiency in the spirit. Hallelujah. 
I did observe just a quick recap for those who are following and for those who were not here yesterday we established the fact that the Bible tells us that all of us in Christ are the called that we are called and he calls it a holy calling so we've established the fact that all believers in Christ according to scripture are called but then that second Peter chapter 1 and verse 10 says it is my responsibility and your responsibility to make our calling and our election sure that even though we are the called and we are the chosen in Christ and by Christ that we have a responsibility please pay attention to make our callings and our elections sure and we did say that all of the dimensions in the kingdom that we continue to search for is to the end that we be equipped to make our calling and our election sure that one of these provisions that empowers the saints to be able to be efficient is the anointing we discussed that the anointing is a system that legitimizes the operation of a believer it is like your authorization to represent his majesty in this side of his kingdom we did observe also that the anointing is God's ability at work in a human or a material vessel to produce God's dimension of results the Bible says it is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous it is only marvelous when it is the Lord's doing if it is man's doing it is natural you don't clap for me for walking but when a man begins to fly it is not given to men ordinarily and so you know that that is now a supernatural dimension are we together and I did observe yesterday night that there are requirements we call them a price there is a price for the anointing when you really really want to access the anointing of the Holy Spirit there is a price and the price is hidden in a statement in Proverbs chapter 23 we'll pick it up from there Proverbs 23 please help us media and verse 26 the first price for the anointing upon the life of a believer is captured in the mystery of the first two words my son my son the first prize for the anointing is intimacy relationship you cannot be anointed from afar so he has to draw you to the place of sonship that the anointing is the business of a family it is a family affair you cannot host the anointing of the Holy Spirit being a stranger he says but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded so when God is beckoning on men to obtain and to receive the anointing his first clarion call is not to come and receive it is my son come closer move closer to the place of intimacy past the gates of church past the gates of religion past the gates of man of God and woman of God past the gates of apostle and prophet and teacher and all of these things come to a place of intimacy and fellowship price number one price number two we established yesterday still the same scripture please give it to us it says my son give me your heart that is the second requirement surrender the first price is the price of intimacy and fellowship with God the second price is the price of total absolute unreserved surrender You may have heard me say it in my teachings that the price for all of God is all of you. The price for all of God is not your offering. No. Not your intellect. No. That's too small. The price for all of God is all of you. When you want all of God, what you give, the, the payment is all of you. Are we together? So price number one, my son intimacy draw close the bible says no eye hath seen 
Paul was speaking to the church in Corinth, no ear has heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man. The Bible says what God has prepared, not for prayer warriors, not for fasting giants, not for ministers, for them that love him. And then number three, for this service, the third prize is let your eyes observe my ways. So price number one, my son, build intimacy. Price number two, give me your heart. Total surrender. Price number three, let your heart observe my ways. Let your heart observe my ways. I think it's Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 4. Please give it to us. Let me just confirm that it's that scripture. Very powerful scripture. Habakkuk chapter 3. Let's read from verse 3 and then 4. I wish we can have amplified. Is it, is it possible to have amplified? The media. Beautiful. If you can have amplified, just give us just for 3 and 4. Now watch this. It said, God approaching from Sinai came from Teman. And the Holy One from Mount Paran, it says, His glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of His praise. Read verse 4 and never forget this scripture for the rest of your life. Let's go together when we have it. One to read. And His brightness was like the sunlight. Rays streamed from His hand. And there in the sunlight splendor, was the hiding place of his power so god's power has a location his power hides in his light are we together now so when he says observe my ways my power is hidden in my ways the light and the illumination that comes from knowing my ways is where your power and your authority comes from I did share yesterday that the word of God is like a tray and it carries all the possibilities that can come in God on top of it. So when his word is coming to you, you celebrate the word not because of the word in itself, but its ability to carry everything God. When the word of God comes to you, in that word is your healing. In that word is your deliverance. In that word is your breakthrough. Are we together? The Bible says in that light, that comes from his hand is the hiding place of his power lord where is your power is hidden in my light so when i want to make you powerful i come to you as light that spiritual illumination please listen to me most people have not been able to walk in kingdom power and authority because there is so much spiritual information in the body of Christ but very few people have access to what the Bible calls the mysteries of the kingdom. Please pay attention. Not every spiritual information is for the profiting of the saints. Just because it is spiritual does not mean it will profit you. When you study the world's religion, every one of them is shrouded in secrets and mysteries that have their origin from the realm of the spirit so celebrating spiritual information does not mean you have enlightenment this is where i believe the pride of our generation lies we pride ourselves in the fact that we have scarce spiritual information and we think just because this information is not science based that means we are powerful it's not necessarily so when you ask people who practice occultism their entire life is immersed in spiritual information when you ask people who practice voodoo and practice all of, there is none of them that is ignorant as far as spiritual information is concerned Moses before he met the God of the Bible was more learned than most Christians he was being trained to be the next Pharaoh and Pharaoh was Egypt was the center of both science and wizardry so he was not in ignorance today there are still books that Moses wrote before he met God there were archives of his dealings and those books today are used in the occult are we together now 
I know you know what I'm talking about. There, there are books that were written by Moses before he met the God of the Bible. They were an archive of his education. His tutorials were recorded and there are still people using it today. Because for you to become a pharaoh in Egypt, you had to be a wizard, not a man. Those teachings will change you from being a man into a wizard. That's why God had to train Moses to go back and meet Pharaoh. Because the then Pharaoh would, was his half-brother, Ramesses. So when Moses came back and said, let my people go, he said, Moses, you know these things. We were trained together. You want to die for nothing? You just meet this God in a forest and come to meet Egypt, the center of wizardry. So what token did he give you in the wilderness? And he threw his staff and Pharaoh laughed and said, shame on you. You have forgotten that this is a place of witchcraft. You come to scare us with a snake. Janus, Jambers, come and show this man that this place is also a center of wizardry. And they threw their rods too. They didn't pray on it. They all stopped talking and allowed their revelations to keep speaking. This is not my sermon. I'm just, I'm just encouraging us. There are many dimensions of useless spiritual information that does not profit the saints, neither advance the cause of the kingdom. Most of this information came as a result of the pride of men to search what seems to give them an edge. But these things, that's why the Bible says, when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you. There are books today that have been written that are deceiving the body of Christ. Because these books did not come under the leadership of the Holy Spirit. They just came after men who wanted to just move forward in life. And some of these people sincerely so, some of them. There are people who have gone for prayer and fasting programs and encountered demonic spirits that downloaded all kinds of supernatural things supposedly. And these things continue to confuse the body. Let your eyes observe. Not just see, observe. Because there are many things that will look like it, but it's not it. Let your eyes observe my way. Are we blessed this morning? We are discussing the anointing. If Janus and Jambers can turn a rod to a serpent, that means they can make someone stand up from the wheelchair too. Do you agree with me? I'm not being critical. That means they can program a climate of favor on your shop too. And in one day, you will get from your shop what you had not gotten in one year. So what then? is the need for the holy spirit what then is the need for the anointing look at the story of moses the bible says when the serpents were on the ground seeing that they were both serpents pressure came upon the integrity of elohim and he caused a serpent the serpent of moses to swallow the rod do you know what that meant no magic again because those rods you see were not ordinary rods you couldn't do magic without them now he swallowed it and yet did not increase in size and said you explain this mystery that i ate another rod master over time and matter he demonstrated there that i am lord of the universe are we together we become powerful in this kingdom when we understand the mysteries of the kingdom. The mysteries of the kingdom activate the power of God in the life of the saints. Please understand this. We are a power generation. We like power and that's wonderful. We like miracles, signs, wonders, manifestations of the spirit. And, and there's nothing wrong with that in itself except for the fact that most people do not want to pay the price to sit with scripture and understand the doctrine of scripture and the truth upon which our faith is built and not knowing this will make you to misuse the anointing and sometimes not even access it at all are we together now 
Yes. The imbalances in the misuse of the anointing is because believers do not know the ways of God. I'll give you an example. Let's assume for instance that I am prophesying to say this man of God and the Lord opens my eyes in the realm of the spirit and I suddenly look at a man of God dressed beautifully dressed in white suit and I see a horn on him or I see something demonic now you see that vision is God attempting to show me something but my understanding of scripture should already reveal to me the character of God and how he operates which should inform the way I will interpret that vision if I am not grounded in the word I'm just going to say what I see and saying what I see in the hearing of natural men will mislead them I did not see wrong but my not knowing the ways of God did not culture my interpretation so it ends up creating another error and I am surprised that while I am prophesying people are leaving God are we together for instance when I look at this man and I see what looks like evil I know according to scripture that the believer has been given the ministry of reconciliation number two it is not God's desire listen to me it is not in the character of God to watch a man have a challenge in his life and then allow that man to just go and die in perdition especially that he's a preacher of the gospel are we together now so i know that god may be showing me something that may be wrong with this man's foundation it does not mean the man is evil it is left for me now to use the lens of scripture and doctrine in my administering the power of god sometimes it may require for the sake of those he has influence over to see him in private because delivering this message in an attempt to reveal God's counsel will demean his leadership and his influence. All this one now is not the anointing. It is your understanding of scripture. Our fathers and the patriarchs that have gone, you know, many of them have gone to be with the Lord. They access strange dimensions of the anointing. Some of them while praying in the forest, fasting, they encountered God in many great ways. And because some of them were not educated in as much as we know education to be and then some of them did not have the opportunity to be enlightened their limitations intellectually affected their dispensing of the anointing many of them what the anointing upon them could do they never were able to do it in their lifetime because knowledge did not give space for the multifaceted dimensions of the anointing in them to find expression now when you come and receive the same anointing they had it will look like you receive something greater but your knowledge now gives it more expression let your eyes observe my ways if someone comes to you now and says apostle or pastor I'm in a financial trouble if all you know is just anointing you will just lay hands on him and say in the name of Jesus it is done because of the dimension of the prophetic at work in you he will get a breakthrough but he will not be blessed he will get that breakthrough for a while and solve the current problem but sustainably he's not going to increase because there are principles that are responsible for sustainable increase and since you have just limited him to the prophetic operation of the anointing he will keep coming back to you every time he's in trouble are we together my son give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways Jesus was training the disciples and like I told you yesterday you never see the mention of anointing maybe more than two or three times in the entire gospel no the beatitudes the teachings of the kingdom yet he was preparing all these people to carry his anointing and you do not hear mention of anointing in his lectures he was just teaching them you your eyes the light of the body you are a city set on a hill this your law says this but this is what i now say when he had now prepared them to the point that when he rose again 
he didn't even have time to celebrate his victory he said guys let's go back and have lectures in 50 days the holy ghost is coming upon you and i must finish what i'm teaching you let him not come upon minds that are not enlightened and when he was done with them he said tarry 10 more days and that power comes upon you listen to me when god wants to truly anoint you he brings you to the school of the spirit and teaches you the ways of god not the anointing the ways of god are we together it teaches you the ways of god that is the mystery of the making of men he says follow me and i will make you he makes you and then empowers you if you do not submit to his making and the making comes through the word he builds you up empowers you the light from that illumination now strengthens you and when that engracing comes you become a cutting edge battle axe because you have been thoroughly furnished in the spirit excesses of imbalance out of your life the side effect of manifesting the anointing without the word is error and imbalance when you become a dispenser of the anointing and you are not guided by the coordinates of the word look at me i hope you know in the parable of the ten virgins the oil was trapped inside the lamb the oil found is relevant provided it was inside the coordinates of the lamb and that lamp is the word of God so the oil finds expression provided it is trapped in that container of the lamp if all you have is oil it will not profit you the oil's relevance is found when it is inside the lamp are we together now He says go and meet them that sell buy oil put it in your lamp then the lamp will continue to burn strengthened by the oil the whole goal is not the oil the whole goal is not the lamp the goal is light but the dynamics of that light is the union of the oil and the lamp let your eyes observe my ways very quickly why do we need the anointing let me just rush to touch on these areas because we're discussing the anointing why do we need the anointing it's important for us to understand why we need the anointing why does the believer need the anointing number one to subdue the forces of darkness fighting against our destinies and the advancement of the kingdom why do we need the anointing that engracing of the spirit to subdue the forces of darkness that war against our destinies and against the advancement of the kingdom psalm 66 and verse 3 say unto god it says how terrible art thou in your ways psalm 66 and verse 3 through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you not through your being alive not through your being a preacher scripture did not leave us in the dark ladies and gentlemen as to the fact that the whole world lies in wickedness it is true an uncomfortable truth but it is true that our world is a wicked place there are spirits that predate the existence of men in fraternity with men to destroy destinies and to sabotage ultimately the purposes of God and it takes the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit to subdue them Isaiah 10 and verse 27 it says it shall come to pass on that day please give it to us it shall come to pass on that day Isaiah chapter 10 27 that the burden shall be taken away from your shoulder if it is taken away God did not put it there it says and the yoke from off your neck 
if you have both a yoke and a burden upon you already that will impede your advancement and it says it shall be destroyed because of the anointing there are yokes that sit upon the lives and the destinies of people when jesus came making his own manifesto in luke chapter 4 we make reference to that also in isaiah chapter 61 the messianic prophecy please give it to us let's read the first four verses isaiah 61 the spirit of the lord god he says is upon me because the lord hath anointed me for these number one to preach good tidings to the poor it takes the anointing to preach good tidings to the poor it takes more than sympathy it takes more than empathy it takes the anointing of the spirit number two he had sent me authorized me by the anointing to bind up the brokenhearted kjv please and then number three to proclaim liberty it says thank you to the captives you don't proclaim liberty just because you have a voice be free no that when you announce that there is an anointing that can break every yoke and set the captives free to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison my goodness my god that means there are human beings who are walking bishop on earth moving physically yet in the realm of the spirit there are doors and prisons locking them there are families sincere people they can travel to the u.s come back travel to the um, uk come back go all around the world have all their education or whatever it is but according to the revelation of scripture they are locked up in prison houses waiting for the anointing to open that door can i tell you this time does not open the door it's the anointing that opens it you can be in that prison door give birth to your children in that prison give birth to your grandchildren in that prison but i come in the name of jesus this morning by the grace and the power of the holy spirit that everyone here shalika parutiata every family locked up and chained in all kinds of prisons in the name of jesus listening and following online from whatever nation and here in asaba i declare by the spirit of god for that door that has been closed Efata, be open now 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 please sit down it is because the prison door is closed that's why you can be looking at your destiny helper he's close to you yet you don't know there is a divide between you and him he can bless and help everybody around you and say come back please be sensitive this morning we came for very serious business give us back that scripture please verse 2 to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn these are the things the anointing does to appoint unto them that mourn i like this do you know what this means set a date for their deliverance hmm. it doesn't mean announce set a date you can call their deliverance today and it will happen to appoint unto them that mourn in zion it says to give them beauty for ashes the garment of praise for what the spirit of heaviness that they might be called oaks or trees of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might be glorified in their lives verse three verse okay verse four now and they shall build the old wastes so it takes the anointing 
that what my father could not do i once heard that there was greatness in this family i once heard that we were great people that this family had men and women of god men of fire that when the missionaries came this was the family that supported them but right now there is almost no one who believes in god in this family it says to build back the old ways to say no way we must get back to the spiritual heritage there are many of you you go back to the archives in your family and you find out that your grandparents were part of the cutting edge activity of the spirit but as it is now there is almost no one aside from you that calls upon the name of the Lord to build back the old waste it says they shall raise up the former desolations they shall repair the waste cities the desolations of many generations all by the anointing all by the anointing so we need the anointing to subdue the forces of darkness that fight against our destinies and against the kingdom of God. Look up please, let me tell you this. If the average believer is ever aware at the schemings of darkness over your life, that alone will motivate you to take God seriously. I think that because of, now I don't mean to insult technology and our you know secular living i have profound respect for it but i think most believers have been blinded at the reality if a legion of demons were in one man one there are only about maybe six to eight billion people as we know today now on earth roughly speaking that is child's play relative to the number of demons and spiritual forces that are on earth that is what child's play That means there are enough spirits to be assigned per destiny. Satan has not hidden his hatred for anything God, including you. So when you stood to give your life to Christ, you are not the only one that witnessed your salvation. The gates of darkness saw this. So finally, this family now has one person who has stood to say I am for Jesus and not only me when you were praying with your wife and saying as for me and my house we will serve the Lord it was not only you in that room and it was not angels alone the realm of the spirit was watching your prayer and they were hearing your confession and they said all right you have drawn the line and we walk carelessly just believing that in some way my life I will excel just like that when Jesus finished fasting the first person he saw was not an angel the first person he saw was Satan Satan left the whole world and was waiting patiently for 40 days there are some fastings that don't just drive demons it makes them to say what is happening in Asaba we, we, there is a signal an unusual angelic activities happening somewhere in Asaba who is that person burning the incense of prayer it's not everything that just drives demons there are things that call them your giving your sacrifice the realm of the spirit is responding and they want to come and find out who is this and they say it's a pastor pastor they check the archives in the spirit We've not had the mention of pastor in this family. Where is this coming from? It's coming from a young man who has covenanted with God that he will be a liberator of his family. And he says, draw the line. Whatever it will take, whether it's an accident, whether it's a destruction, he said, whatever it will, to, to, you know, all those kinds of things. And then scheme it to destroy him. Ah! But in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, I say it again that every force sitting on anyone's destiny I'm not motivating you I stand by the God who called me and I declare in the name of Jesus that their power is broken over your life broken oh help them please help that lady broken over your family please help them in the name of Jesus I set on fire everything that is not of the Christ I destroy every yoke I stand by the God of heaven and through the voice of prophecy I arrest every spirit 
I arrest every ordinance speaking against you. Please sit down. Hila sala paruza siya katabaranda katoshia. Shkatabalaka toziata. Just pray in the spirit in one minute where you are seated. Shkatabarata side balahaskabia. Fire is burning in this place. Shkembaratas kedale sabaruta ziata. Enough is enough. It's time for destinies to shift. It's time for lives to change. It's time for that which was spoken concerning your life. Man of God, are you praying? Enough is enough. It's time to see the power, the grace and the glory of God. It's time for that which was written concerning me to speak. Are there men of prayer in Asaba? Shatata katalikata. Ebrata katosh kabarata. Shagatas kabarakatabakata. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Please sit down and be sensitive. Please give me volume, Elijah. Number two, why do you need the anointing? Mm. To fulfill your divine assignment and advance the kingdom of God. The second reason why you need the anointing is to fulfill your divine assignment. Hear me. Thank God for skill. Thank God for your abilities. Thank God for your human potentials. But in this kingdom, human potentials can only take us so far. You cannot do kingdom assignments ultimately in the strength of the flesh. You will need an empowerment from heaven. Are we blessed? Yes. You cannot heal the sick set the captives free fulfill your god-given assignment just using the force of intellect just using the force of secular knowledge thank god for your education thank god for your exposure but in all you're getting get authentic spiritual power why do we need the anointing only the anointing can produce god's dimension of results to his satisfaction only the anointing can produce god's dimension of results to his satisfaction your ability cannot produce god's dimension of results to his satisfaction only the anointing I can tell you this with all humility in my little work with God and in ministry not to brag forgive me if I sound arrogant but I have seen wonders in the lives of people I have seen God do things that are all inspiring and I go back and I know the difference between me and the anointing I can disconnect myself from that result and I know this one you have nothing to do with it the sea did not part for Elijah the sea parted for whoever carried that mantle it was not about Elijah it was about the career of that mantle when Elisha carried it and came and said where is the Lord God of Elijah Are you blessed this morning? Yes sir. yes, sir. Hear me. God wants to give you rest. There are many of us, you are sincere people, 
but I bring you to a dimension where you stop doing things in the flesh you are doing business in the flesh you will be angry and you will hate successful people for the rest of your life because you will try to attract customers and even your own tribes people will leave you it is whoever access an advantage from the realm of the spirit who exerts dominion here great men and women of God it takes more than a good Bible study to have God honor you and increase you and have people come to listen to the counsel of God upon your lips and to have a generation honor and acknowledge the workings of God upon you it takes more than that there is a dimension of grace an angel of the Lord is pouring oil on this lady this lady with hands on her mouth I'm seeing oil and the Lord is saying he's shifting you to a new dimension in the spirit I stretch my hands now you step into that dimension in the spirit we are here for you come and do what you do we are here for you come and do what you do set my heart on you so you do what you do we need me this season we need me this season Come and do what you do. Come and do what you do. Come and do what you do. Come and lift the way you lift. Come and heal the way you heal. Come and bless the way you come and change the way you change come and lift the way you live we need the moon this is a moon we need a moon This is I'm seeing doors in the spirit and I'm seeing doors just opening this is what I'm seeing in the spirit I'm seeing doors these are doors of destinies that have been closed this is what the Lord is showing me in the spirit I believe that some of them are here doors ancient doors this is what i'm seeing in the spirit that's why i started singing that song some of these doors are doors of ministry you have done what you know to do you are sincere serving god with all your heart but it looks like these doors do not want to open my friend shout jesus as loud as you can you yes i stretch my hands upon you new dimension in the spirit you will never be the same in the name of jesus christ Lord let the doors be open let the doors be open I don't know whose door this is but in the name of Jesus my God is telling me that these doors are opening 
I open them prophetically by the anointing age long doors that have refused to open for some of the doors we don't just open them we break the doors so that they are never closed again he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder we break those doors help that lady we break those doors we are here for you come and what you do we are here come and do set our hearts shela paruta salakata let's sit down we're about to pray now Please, whether you are an usher or not, for this session we are entering, in, just be sensitive. If someone is under the anointing close to you, please help them. Hallelujah. Maybe for this session, we'll just take one more. How to receive the anointing. Please pay attention. Be sensitive. How to receive the anointing. Everything receivable can be rejected. Someone at the back in this room, I just saw light. There's a lady, the power of God is coming on that person. I just saw light. I don't know who that is, but in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare by the Spirit, please, when you find that person under the anointing, please bring them out. In the name of Jesus, light by the Spirit. The Lord is bringing an end to captivity. Hear me, except God is not God. Whatever followed you, and brought you here i stand by the god whom i serve and whose i am that it will never follow you back it will never follow you back it will never follow you back please sit down how to receive the anointing Number one, there are two main biblical platforms for receiving the anointing. Number one, directly from God, through an encounter or through his word. Write it down. Number one, directly from God through a supernatural encounter or through his word just like we have observed you can be imparted and you can get that anointing directly from the word the light remember is the hiding place of his power directly from god the wisdom the unction that solomon carried came directly from god through an encounter of a dream there are impartations that I've received directly from the Lord Jesus Christ. I've shared my story with you. He was not a mortal man. Even though God has used men. But I've had encounters directly from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords himself. So you can have direct encounters. Number two. The second biblical way to receive the anointing is through impartation from the carriers of the anointing. Through impartation from the carriers. Go and buy from them that sell. The parable of the ten virgins. It is oil you are looking for. I have lamp, but it's not burning because there is no oil. And it says, go. If you go to the market and you are humble enough to search, 
if you really have the currency for purchase find out those who sell it the word sell it does not mean a manipulative way it just means those who distribute it the administrators of the grace and the anointing of the spirit are we together impartation second kings 2 and verse 2 2 and verse 2 and Elijah said unto Elisha tarry here I pray thee for the Lord had sent me to Bethel and Elisha said unto him as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth I will not leave you so they went down to Bethel next verse and the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha, listen carefully, and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yes, I know. Hold your peace. These guys were, the next prophet should come out from them. They were in the school of the prophets, but they had gotten so familiar. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And they met a man who was a farmer had no business being part of the prophetic lineage but his hunger he recognized that Elijah is not just a man and he said as far as your journey is concerned I will go with you the prophet had been trained enough to start seeing visions so they could see that he will be lifted but there was no hunger to receive there are rules for impartation listen carefully there are rules of engagement as far as impartation is concerned i think this is where a lot of sincere people especially ministers of the gospel miss it we just think because you have an encounter or contact with the career of a certain grace you have received the anointing no you think so but there are rules and i want to share some of them with you number one the first the first requirement for receiving an impartation from a vessel that carries it is discernment. Discernment. If you can see me, he was looking at him already and said, no, if you can see me, if you discern that I'm not just a human being, but I represent a spiritual system of the prophetic, you will carry what you see. A man can have different levels of graces the grace you discern is the grace that leads him to you it's not the grace that is on him that comes to you it's the grace that your discernment can pick a man can have the grace for prayer a grace for speed a grace for favor a grace for influence your discernment only sees the grace for influence he lays hands on you and you think everything on him came to you it is the grace you discern that came to you are we together Please learn this. The first rule for impartation is discernment. Father, this is my bishop and my pastor. But what is upon this man? Lord, reveal to me by the Spirit. I just don't want it to be that I was invited to this church and I'm now a member of this church. Reveal to me. The disciples thought that Jesus was just joseph's son and mary's son but at the mount of transfiguration god opened their eyes to see who this jesus was and suddenly they saw his spirit man as bright as the sun and two strange entities were standing close to him moses and elijah Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him 
that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.